Hi everyone. So in today's video, I am going to cover this paper, parameter efficient transfer learning for NLP. This is so to say an old paper. It's just five years old, but the field is moving so fast that it's now an old paper. So the reason why I'm going after this paper is because I'm going to do a series where I'm going to cover parameter efficient fine tuning methods. And this is one of the first ones out there. So I'm going to start with this paper and then we will continually build up and reach uh, the more recent papers. Also, sorry for being absent for a while. Uh, a lot has changed. I graduated, I started my job, a lot of things, but I hopefully would try to be more active now. So without further ado, let's move right into it. Also, this would be a very short summary. If you want to actually understand the paper's results, you should definitely read the paper. This video is intended to be, say, around 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes so that people can quickly learn about a method. And then if they find it interesting, they can go back and look at it. So enough talking. What's the core idea of the paper? So the problem, the problem they're trying to solve is that fine tuning has been shown. Fine tuning has become a very effective mechanism. So this is back in 2019. Right now we have all sorts of different fine tuning methods, but back then BERT had just come out uh, fine tuning usually meant fine tuning the entire model or fine tuning a few layers. However, uh, if you have many downstream tasks, uh, fine tuning becomes parameter inefficient because for every single downstream task, you get a new model. So in this paper, they address the online setting where you keep getting tasks in a stream. And what their goal is, it is to build a system that performs well on all of them, but you do not want to juggle around with too many models. You want to have like one model where you can do some simple switches and get a new model, which works well for that task. So you already you can see that this is very similar to how people have uh, LoRa adapters nowadays. So adapter is sort of like the predecessor to all of the other adapter methods we use nowadays. So the solution they come up with is of course these adapter modules, which are compact and extensible. So they train only a few parameters per task and these can be uh, added without uh, revisiting the old tasks. And then you can sort of hot swap these adapters, remove them when you're doing some other task. And uh, even during inference time, you can have uh, some sort of heuristic where if the task is of a particular kind, you activate an adapter, otherwise you turn it off. So the core idea is that the parameters of the original network remain fixed. So you can swap the adapters if the original parameter network parameters were changed, then you couldn't do that. So there's a lot of information in this slide, but I'll promise it's uh, not very difficult. So let's just go over this uh, highlighted chunk first. So this just contrasts uh, adapters with the other methods which existed back then. So let's look at the methods uh, they talk about. So the first is this feature-based transfer, where you have phi of w, so phi of W are the parameters. Uh, if the neural network has parameter W, then you can write it as phi, phi W of X. So it just takes these as features and then builds a new function, which is this chi V. So only the new task specific parameters V are trained. So mm -hmm. this would be something like you get the embedding using a BERT model, and then you train a multilayer perceptron for a classification task. Now, fine tuning uh, is the next method, which involves adjusting the original parameters to W. So in this, you uh, either tune all the parameters or a subset of the parameters, but you do this for every task. And then there's little sharing between them. If you say fine tune all the parameters, then there's no sharing. If you say fine tune only the top five layers, then the bottom how many layers are left are being shared. Now coming to adapter tuning. So in this, you have a whole new function altogether where uh, it is a function of the original weights W and these new weights V. So these parameters W are copied over from pre-training and then a V is what is being learned. So these are initially set up to be, uh, initial, V is initially initialized to some V naught such that this resembles the original function. So had you taken an input and passed it through either a new model with the adapters or through the old model with only the weights, 
you would get approximately similar results. So we'll discuss more about why when we, uh, in this slide only, but this is how they initialize it. And during training, only V is tuned. So this W is not tuned. Now, how does this save memory? Well, uh, for deep networks, uh, if you choose a value of V, which is much smaller than W, then you only need to tune a very small set of parameters. So since W is fixed, you can just hot swap these adapters and to new tasks and you only train, say, a very small fraction, 1% or something of that sort of the original weights. So now this is the architecture. Uh, so this is a snapshot from the paper. So a lot of the text I'm using is a verbatim from the paper. I am not really trying to uh, do something novel here. I'm using the same text, but just trying to convey it in a more concise way. So the first figure here is a normal transformer BERT uh, style block. So this is the encoder only model. So you have your attention first, and then you have your feed forward network, point-wise feed forward network. So you can clearly see they introduced two adapters, one after the attention, but before the residual connection, and one again after the MLP, but again before the residual connection. And you can also see the layer norm is in green. So they decided to tune the layer norm parameters also. So alongside these adapters, which are outlined here in their full glory, you also tune these layer norm parameters. So an adapter block looks something like this. You get your input representation. You have a down projection. You have a non-linearity, then you have an up projection. So this is a simple MLP kind of structure. And you also have this residual connection within uh, the adapter. So uh, as I mentioned before, all these green, component, green components are trained. So the feed forward networks, uh, the non-linearity if it is trainable and the layer norm. So I hope what an adapter is, is now pretty clear. The adapter modules have two primary features which they focus on. One is they should use a small number of parameters so that even if the module size grows, uh, the number of parameters which are being added by the adapter does not grow significantly. Uh, and then uh, even as you get more tasks, uh, the growth is relatively less because uh, if you are training a new model for every task, for 10 tasks, you have like 11x, uh, 10x now, because you have one original set and then 10 new sets. So in a sense, you have now 11 models, but uh, here you only have, say you only using 1% of the parameters, so you are only getting 10% uh, or 11% new weights to show. Then uh, the other is the near identity initialization. So this they found is also needed for stable training. So when you initialize the adapters to near identity, which we talked about right here, the original network is unaffected when the training starts. So during training, the adapters may then be activated so that you can learn stuff, but you can also ignore them. So it continues to act like a normal model. So you might want to train it on some samples. You might not want to train it on the other samples. Uh, they also uh, notice that if you deviate the initialization too far from the identity, the model does not really train well. So this is an empirical observation that they make. Now the experiments and results, I'll again be very brief here. I, uh, the core idea has been conveyed about what adapters are, but uh, I'll just give a very high level view. So they used this on BERT models because that was uh, all the rage back then. And they fine tuned it on 26 diverse text classification tasks from the GLUE benchmark. They also had another 17 public uh, classification tasks and also the squad question answering benchmark. So all of these are very, were very popular and even till date, these GLUE benchmarks, et cetera, remain very popular. So on GLUE, they attain within 0.4% of the performance of full fine tuning. So if full fine tuning is 100%, they're, with, they're uh, around 99.6% of that by only uh, adding 3.6% parameters per task while full fine tuning adds 100%, trains 100% of the parameters per task. This uh, graph is also very interesting. So the blue line is for when you fine tune the top layers. So the different points, so the x-axis denotes how many trainable parameters you have. So you might wonder what does it mean to have lesser or higher here. So 
So it means that you fine tune lesser number of layers from the top. And as you go here, you are fine tuning all the layers of the model. And this is your adapter. So you can see even uh, in an equi uh, equi-parameter re regime. So when it's around 10 to the power six parameters being trained per task, uh, you have a 10 point difference between the adapters and uh, the full fine tuning with the adapters being significantly better. And as you close out on full fine tuning, uh, um, you, a much smaller adapter does pretty well on it. So these, uh, even if you look at the deviation, you can see that it's still very far away and there's a lot of deviation towards the negative side. So uh, this clearly indicates that adapters are pretty good at learning stuff while also being giving you all the benefits of being parameter efficient and hot swappable and all of those other things. So I hope uh, the results are clear. For more tables, et cetera, you can all, of course, refer to the paper. They do an excellent job evaluating this extensively. And then I'll go over some ablations. This is the final slide. So uh, just wanted to show uh, what do adapters learn? Are they really helpful, et cetera, et cetera. So if you, the first point which you note is that if you remember to train the layer norm as well as the adapters, so here you can see that uh, if uh, they check, what if we only train the layer norms? What if everything, all the gains come from the layer norm? Well, they tried that and it does not work well. Next, they look at removing a single layer adapter and how uh, does that affect? So that is just uh, looking at this uh, diagonal. So basically this plot means uh, what is the first layer and what is the last layer being ablated. So as, Zero, zero means only the zeroth layer is being ablated, while a zero, 11 means all 11 adapters have been removed. And then these first two are for two different data, data sets, Manila and Cola, which are all very popular data sets. You can look them up. So you can see the uh, heat map here shows almost no change along the diagonal. So uh, there are some places where it changes, but it's very small. As a note, uh, the largest drop is only 2%. In contrast, these regions are very dark. So they mentioned that you get around 37% drop on MNLI and 69% drop on COLA uh, if you remove all the adapters. So this indicates that although each adapter has a small influence, when combined together, they have a very large influence. Now they also look at how much effect does it have uh, on where the adapters are placed. So adapters on the lower layers have a smaller impact than the higher layers, which is presumably because they are much closer to the output layer. So you can see that removing the adapters from layer zero to four, so which would be somewhere around here, has much lesser impact. Uh, this indicates that adapters perform well because they innately learn to prioritize higher layers and they do not do as much change on the lower layers. And of course, this was an intuition back then and till date remains a very popular intuition that lower layers extract lower level features that are shared, which uh, do not need a no lot of new learning, while high layers have to compose those features and then uh, learn basically. Also this plot on the right, so this is just performance of bird base using adapters with different uh, initial weight magnitudes. So basically if you deviate too far from uh, the uh, initialization distribution, you get uh, this kind of performance difference. So this is basically the high level ablations which I wanted to cover. And this is all I have for this paper. I hope you now understand what adapters are and uh, thank you to all the authors for bringing this very interesting work to life. Thank you. <laughs>